What's up guys, Nolan here. We got a weekly breakdown for you with a few of the top questions and a bit of breaking news from around the Escape from Tarkov community. We just got confirmation from BSG that they will be traveling to Las Vegas next month for TwitchCon and they are bringing Arena with them. More on that in a minute. Since they're bringing Arena with them, some questions have popped up about if this will be their final stop before release and we'll discuss that. Also, recently there was some drama about ammunition in game and what should or shouldn't be available, but I chimed in with my take about how it won't matter because of the armor hitbox change and that put the discussion on its head a bit. Lots of people didn't even know that this was happening. They didn't know the details. And of course, everybody thinks that it's going to kill the game once it is actually in the game. So we're going to discuss that in full detail as well, including the new boss that will utilize the system better than any that we've seen. We have a lot to talk about today, but first I have to thank today's sponsor, War Thunder. Guys, War Thunder is legitimately my favorite military vehicle sim game. I have thousands of hours in it over the years with the US and German tech trees finished while I'm still working through Russia and the UK. The collection of vehicles in War Thunder spanned over 100 years of development from the 1920s to the present day, with one of the most dynamic and detailed vehicle damage models in gaming. No general hit points, vehicles suffer actual damage to their components and crew instead. New War Thunder players across all platforms, PC, PlayStation, and Xbox, as well as those who haven't played for at least six months, can claim a large bonus pack including multiple premium vehicles, premium account time, exclusive cosmetics, and much, much more by using my link in the description description, but it's only available for a limited time. So don't wait, check out War Thunder now, free on PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. So we'll start with the breaking news. BSG have been teasing about how over the last couple of days they'll be going to TwitchCon, and last night we got confirmation that BSG would have a booth at TwitchCon, and this morning I got confirmation from them that Arena specifically will be there. Exactly like Japan and Germany, they will have Arena playable at TwitchCon this year, which is October 20th to the 22nd. What they didn't confirm, even to me, was whether or not it will be exactly like Tokyo, where the public could just walk up and play or Germany where they needed an appointment. They said more details soon so I imagine they're doing something special but we'll have to wait and see which of course you'll hear about it once I do. Be sure to follow me on Twitter or join the Discord for the latest minute by minute news. Now thanks to Jesse Kazam and Velian, I will be able to attend a TwitchCon because they had some extra room in their Airbnb so I'm going to be able to go. I'll be booking flights once I'm done with this video and I'll of course be hanging out with and around the Tarkov community when I'm actually there. I'm not even partnered on Twitch let alone invited by Twitch so there won't be anything Thing like official Twitch meetups like that. But again, follow me on Twitter and join the Discord. I'll post where I'm at over the weekend. Anything going on with Tarkov that's significant, I will of course be there. Where they are giving these special details and TwitchCon is pretty significant, I wouldn't put it out of the realm of possibility that BSG do something crazy with it, like even more access than Japan, than just the public being able to play, or possibly even a soft release of Arena. Trust me, it makes sense. Let me explain. I would say don't get your hopes up, but when you look at it, it's clear that BSG BSG are on a marketing path for Arena specifically where they're hitting every major game convention before the end of the year. They were at Gamescom, they were just at Tokyo, and now they're going to be at TwitchCon. Tokyo Game Show was the last notable gaming convention, while TwitchCon is probably just their best bet since E3 has been canceled. BSG have done releases and showcases with the Game Awards before, which is later this year, so it's possible something pops up with that too. But if we're thinking the most positive outcome, maybe a private release announcement or initial small pool public release with Arena at TwitchCon, or at least give us a date, and then they open the doors at the Game Awards, who knows. Again, regardless, we're going to see this by the end of the year with the end of the year or New Year's wipe that we're going to be getting in December anyway. If you're not sure why that makes sense, I'm thinking of the safe way to roll it out. If they get Arena out to a lot of people, really as many people as possible before the next wipe, that is just good for a more balanced Arena and game in general at the next wipe. A lot of people are worried about the balance of Arena in connection to the base game myself included, so the more input that we can get in on that before it actually really affects a wipe, the better. More on that in a separate video, though. Give me your thoughts on the subject in the comments, and I'll include them in the next video. Now for the major topic of today's video, the new armor plate and hitbox system, which before we get started isn't set in stone and subject to change, so keep that in mind going forward. TLDR, though, with absolutely no exaggeration, this will be the biggest change to escape from Tarkov since they added inertia. You will be able to die much, much, much easier, even with some 
some of the best armor in the game, at least in today's standards, and it will completely reshape the economy in unforeseen ways. We just need to get our hands on it to see what happens. Armor will only cover you if it is literally covering you, and that means the plate or some kind of ballistic pad or something. There's going to be lots of different types of armor, which we'll get to in a second. The days of it magically covering every pixel of the body part it says it covers is going to be over, and that's only if you put a plate or a pad there, because you can choose not to put armor there, even if there is a slot to put armor there. When you select a plate for a rig, you will see where the plate covers. Then for some rigs, you can select extra padding and smaller plates for added protection. Where you see an opening is actually an opening. There is no armor there, or it could be a strap or something, meaning it won't stop any kind of bullet or projectile or, or fragmentation, really. If you don't see armor there, then there is no armor there, period. That is the simple understanding of what's happening with this. The only full protection that you can get from this is the big heavy vests, and even then, you'll have weak spots under the arms at least, because that's just how this works. So there will be a new economy based on the plates and ammunition, as we will need to comb through and find out what the most effective setup for rigs and plates are going to be, while the more high pen ammo will be needed a lot less, because a hell of a lot less people are going to be spending the money or deciding to use the higher level plates and armor, while depending on what that higher level plate or armor is, they might not even wear it anyway. If it's not full protection, if it doesn't get you on the sides or up by the neck, a simple pistol or buckshot from a shotgun will get past and it will kill you. I imagine even somebody with tens of millions of rubles in their stash won't like spending a lot of money on a really nice slick or hell even level four and five armor that doesn't protect your side or neck when you simply just get shot down immediately by scabs. Except this time, they're just gonna have a shotgun or even a pistol or an SMG. My guess right now is that level three and four support for your sides and neck with space for up to level six in the front and back will be the new end game meta. Really just any rig that would be able to provide that. And again, we are talking about plates. There's lots of armor in the game that aren't plates. They're just kind of the padding and it's it's in the structure of the rig itself, which won't be included in this because you can't modify or change what the armor is. It's just the rig. So that will have an effect as well. It's tough to see ahead with this stuff because it's not been seen before with a game like this. All we know is that it will be a significant change. I also don't know how rigs will be in terms of durability like we have now, but the plates will be repairable through traders and repair kits at least. As long as your rig can fit a plate, you can put a level six plate in there and there will be loads of different shapes and sizes. You can choose to have armor just in the front or just in the back or just the sides or whatever. It will have the exact same flexibility as attachments on weapons in the game. If there is a slot to put something there, then it'll be available to put something there as long as you have a thing that fits that slot. You will also be able to swap plates in raid and of course bring extras with you if you don't mind the extra weight. So if you kill somebody with a headshot, but during the exchange, they damage your plate, you can just swap your damage plate for theirs. Additionally, if you're looking to make extra money, you can just take the plates instead of the whole rig. Now there is high potential for that not to be worth it, as it does seem that plates don't stack. And they're also two by two, possibly three by three, in which case you should just take the rig, but that's yet to be seen. What is a fact is you will be able to load up certain rigs. So if you bring an empty rig with you, like a lot of people do these days already, with no plates, you'll be able to load that up with plates that you find, front, back, sides, neck, and arms, as well as fill it with loot like we do now. So not only will the best armor rigs in the game be devalued, but the ammunition required to defeat them as well will be devalued. So there will be this weird shift where obviously that level five and six armor is still good and you can just take the plates out of that and put it in something else. So there's still value there for sure, but they won't be the way that they are now also for sure. The old glory days of shotguns, SMGs, and pistols will be back permanently as well. BSG have already proven that with their clip from Tarkov TV. A guy with a slick got annihilated by a shotgun because just a couple of the pellets made it past plate. Level six doesn't do you any good if it's not in front of the thing that's shooting at you. A pistol also got passed so you can see the point. The true variety of the ammunition in the game will come to light. What won't change is the deadliness of the bosses and BSG set the values of items based on their use on boss farms as well. They keep that stuff in mind. So even though high pen ammo isn't as useful to players, it will absolutely still be good for boss farming heavy armor bosses like Killa and any more that they might add. So the value will be represented in that somehow. There's a lot of moving parts. And again, we're just not gonna be able to see the full effects of this without putting a real amount of time in game with it as an entire community. In conclusion on the change specifically, it will be so significant that we can't know if it will be the best or worst thing to happen to the game ever until we actually let the economy shape around it and see what it looks like. The only thing going through BSG's mind on it though is the basis of a realistic as playable system. And that's how it works in real life. So that's the as realistic. We'll just have to see how 
playable it is. If you don't have armor, then you're not protected. Shotguns, SMGs, and pistols, mid-tier ammo will have a much, much, much stronger footing than they do now, and the entire economy and combat ecosystem will be changed forever. The last subject for today, which ties into this, is the police officer, or at least the guy that's wearing the police gear, boss, that we've seen in Chronicles of Rizzi. We now have the big boy Kaban in-game, and Kaban's brother likes to wear police riot gear. Again, we saw that in Chronicles of Rizzi. With the new armor hitboxes, I'm curious if this gear will protect him more effectively, and I also wonder if he'll be more difficult to kill because of it. Also, we don't know if he has a helmet or not. It's possible that this is rather weak armor. This seems to just be riot gear, which shouldn't, or I shouldn't, or I should say, shouldn't really be ballistic. It shouldn't really protect him from powerful, like, rifle rounds and stuff like that. But we'll have to wait and see. Last I heard, they also were not giving him a riot shield, but I'd say it's still possible for some future boss, or they added in as a surprise or something. So that would be a pretty scary combination. Even just the armor hitbox changes with the more advanced armor that's going all the way down his arm, potentially even down his legs. If he's got a big helmet and with or without a riot shield, could be pretty scary. Something to keep in mind. Let me know what you think below. Thanks again to War Thunder for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to take advantage of my link in the description to get your hands on an exclusive War Thunder bonus pack, including vehicle boosters and more. Also available for anybody who hasn't played in the last six months and on every platform, PC, Xbox, and PlayStation. Also, any questions or concerns, leave in the comments and we'll have a round table discussion on this later today. I'm going to be talking to Airwing Marine, Jesse Gazam, and Valian. They're going to be streaming it. I'm going to be recording it. I'll have to figure out when I'm going to post that or what I'm going to do with it specifically, but we're going to be talking about both these subjects today. So stay tuned to my Twitter and Discord, both linked below. That's all for now, guys. Like if you did, sub for more, comment what you think, and check out my other channels for other games right here. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a nice day. See you guys.